Hello everyone, in this video let us uh, create a script to fetch the list of all the projects in our Jira instance using the new code editor. So recently I made one video about uh, the new code editor using script runner. You can definitely write scripts but uh, just like any other uh, tool you need to know how to work with uh, the internal APIs and when it comes to script runner, although it's a great add on, we all love it. Uh, you cannot really do proper Jira administration without using script runner because with the help of script runner, you can definitely uh, take your Jira instance or your customizations to the next level. But when it comes to the learning of uh, script runner, it is uh, or it can be a bit uh, difficult in the, more, in the in the beginning not really for everyone but especially if you don't really have a uh, lot of experience working with uh, jira you don't know what uh, uh, terminologies are in jira you don't really know the apis but the good thing is that uh, if you're trying to write scripts using using script runner using uh, uh, script runner's uh, groovy language not really script runner's groovy language but groovy language which is the language for script runner uh, you can definitely use uh, the ides like uh, intellij for example or you can always go to the atlassian um, uh, api you can uh, search on developer.atlassian.com and there is a url where you can find the list of all the things that you can do with jira or any other atlassian tools uh, using the internal api but when you're talking about uh, working with script runner, you also have this new code editor, which is in the recent version of uh, script runner. And today I want to give you one example uh, using the new code editor. I want to show you how easily you can uh, do something uh, with your uh, Jira instance. And in this example, I will be writing a script to fetch the list of all the projects in a Jira instance, which is a very simple example, but uh, I think it will give you a very good uh, foundation because uh, when you know how to fetch something from your Jira instance, you can then of course uh, uh, update it. Maybe you can have more logic or more uh, um, um, business uh, use case. You can pr probably modify the scripts further, but you need to know how to first uh, do some basic things. So in this particular example, if you notice, I'm trying to use uh, the uh, project manager, which is basically used when you're working with projects. So if you just copy these two lines in your uh, console, you can definitely use console if you don't really have IntelliJ. And uh, let me show you how you can uh, take these two lines further. So let us uh, first type in here project manager. And uh, right now this project manager will uh, be able to interact with uh, the projects in our instance. So uh, let me try to fetch the list of all the projects first. So for doing that, I need to do something. I need to probably call some method to fetch the list of all the projects or I don't really know whether there's a method or not. So what you can do if you're using script runner, when you have the latest version, the most recent version as of uh, May 2019, uh, just uh, press con control space on your keyboard and it will give you this uh, autocomplete option. So in this particular uh, pop-up dialog or screen, not a dialog, but a, but a pop-up uh, window, you can see what all you can do further with project manager. So in this particular case, I I mean, let me just start from the very beginning. So I have something called as uh, all project categories. So it will probably give me a list of all the project categories. I don't know. Honestly, I'm just guessing because it says on the right hand side, some kind of a collection. We can actually try it right now. So let us use it. And uh, instead of just uh, Using this line, I will probably return it so I can take a look at uh, the result. So if I try to run this, I don't really have anything or maybe I don't have any project categories in my Jira instance. So I, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing or not, but let us continue further. If I press the dot again and if I do control space, so it says uh, archived projects. Uh, we, then we have some other options like get all project categories. So maybe we can try this, maybe we can do get all let us see if it returns something 
interesting. So again, it returns nothing. So maybe I don't really have any category. So before I proceed further, let me quickly go to my projects. Uh, if I go to my Jira admin and then projects, let me check if I do if I have any categories or not. And then I'll probably create a couple of categories. So let us see if we have a category in our instance or not. I need to enter my password again, which is fine. It's a bit bothering because sometimes you need to enter password multiple times when you're working with Jira admin. So we don't have any categories, but uh, let me create some categories. So let us say I have a category called internal projects. So these are, I'm just writing some description. These are our own projects. I'll also add a similar category called external projects. And these are not our own projects. So I'm just adding few categories just to understand whether this line will work. So it will actually return something. It is not really user friendly. It is not, it is not really the name of the uh, categories, but let me try to do it again uh, with the initial uh, method that I was trying to use earlier. So if I press control space and there is this first item in the list, all project categories. Let us see if we can do something here. So it is definitely returning me two items uh, with some ID and uh, I'm I'm definitely sure we can do further. We can probably take a look what all we can do. So yeah, we have definitely some other things that we can pro probably do. But right now I'm just focused on uh, the list of projects. That is the intention of this video. Let us not uh, divert ourselves. So I'll remove it. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to retrieve the list of all the projects. Very simple example, but it will give you a very good idea. So let us press control space. And uh, we do have something like get all project keys, uh, get archive projects. I don't think I have any archive projects. Uh, I'm not really using data center. But um, let us see if we have something with the get project count. So it will idly, it should idly return the count of projects. It's quite obvious. So it is currently returning me 14. So definitely we do have some projects in our instance. Let us continue further. And if I press control space again, I can probably take a look at uh, get project category. It is taking some input. Uh, I'm sure it is some number and uh, it might be the number that we saw earlier. Let us see. Let, let me try to do something very quickly. If I again quickly go back to the very first item, all project categories, there is a number here that says 2711, 2710. So let us try if we can do something with this 2711 and 2710. I'm just uh, getting sidetracked in this video, but that is fine. We are exploring. So let us see if we can uh, uh, retrieve the the name of the category. So I, I don't think I'm doing the right thing here, but uh, there is no harm in, try, in trying. So it says null. Uh, all right. So let us try with the other one. It is definitely null here. So maybe I'm not really doing the right thing here. Uh, if I pass here, get name. No, it is not really um, getting me anything, which is fine. Let us, I, I mean, to be honest, I'm just exploring along with you. And the whole idea in this video is to show you how you can use this uh, new code editor. And uh, these things are now possible. Otherwise, you will probably uh, spend time looking on the internally paid documentation. So let us get to the point and let us try to fetch the list of projects. Um, so I do have something called as uh, get project count, which we have seen earlier. We have get project objects, it might work. And then we have something called as get projects. So this seems to be the thing that we want to do uh, because it says get projects. And if I click on the run button, it will return me the list of all the projects. Uh, it is some kind of a list. And uh, if you want to know what all you can do with this, uh, with this method, this function, you can press Control J, and it will open a new window in your browser, and it will take you to this uh, this site called docs.atlassian. 
com where you can uh, take a look at the internal apis and uh, right now i'm looking at this uh, method get projects it is now saying that it's a list so it will basically return all projects ordered by name but you can definitely do a lot further for example if you want to further retrieve or get a list of uh, maybe i don't know some other details of each and each and every individual project you can definitely do that you can probably write a loop but for this particular example let me um uh just retrieve something for the first project let us say we are trying to retrieve maybe the name of my very first project so if i just you know use uh, this index zero and if i press again dot let us see if we can find something here so it says uh, email it says get avatar get uh, get email so we have a lot of things that we can further do and we have something called as uh, get lead let us see if we can uh, retrieve the lead so yes i can retrieve my own name because i am the lead so this is really cool because uh, uh, it is not really about uh, actual coding in groovy of course uh, you can use this interface to search and find what all you can do potentially with the uh, script runner if you're trying to learn script runner then definitely this uh, is really interesting way to just spend time with a tool and uh, playing around trying at different things that you can do if you're using intellij i think that is probably the better option because with the help of intellij you are much quicker you are much efficient but uh, if you're not really bothered about uh, installing intellij if you're maybe maybe you don't have access to intellij or maybe you're working directly on some test environment don't do this on production not a good idea but you can definitely have some staging environment some test environment where you can have script runner installed and you can still just you know spend time playing with it using the new code editor and uh, this example is something really uh, really interesting because uh, we are trying to retrieve the list of projects but uh, using few other things in fact not few other things but a lot of other things uh, i'll probably show you in more videos in future of how you can uh, do more wonderful more wonderful things with the uh, script runner this video the purpose of this video was uh, uh was basically to show you the core editor i made one video about it but i think i will be continuing to use this new core editor for uh, these videos so that anyone who is uh, probably new to script runner or maybe he's trying he or she is trying to learn script runner then definitely this can be a very good option so i hope you learned something in this video and uh, do let me know if you have any feedback or if you want me to make a video on a specific topic i will uh, try to help you thank you very much